Hello and welcome. I'm back with another Next.js 15 video for you. And in the past, I created a video getting started with Next Auth 5 with Next.js. But today I'm going to show you how to accomplish the same thing, but using a headless CMS like Strapi. So first, let me show you the demo of the application. Then we'll go over the code. And then of course, I'm going to share the repo for the project that you could use as an example in your project. So here's my application and I implemented a GitHub auth provider, which I'm able to now sign in with GitHub. And once I'm signed in, I have my user here and that works. What's really cool about this approach, taking a look here in my Strapi backend, taking a look under my content, we have this user and this user is automatically added to Strapi when someone signs up or signs in with GitHub. So if you're already a user, you'll be automatically signed in. If you're not a user, it's going to walk you through the process and create a new user here in our Strapi instance. So now that we saw the demo of this flow, let's take a look in the code, how this works, and then walk through the basic workflow of all the steps that the application goes through when your user signs up or authenticates using the GitHub provider. What's cool about Strapi, if we take a look at settings, we have all these different providers that you could utilize. You could utilize Auth0 and many others here. In my case, I am going to use GitHub only. I could actually go ahead and disable the email because I want users to sign up to my application only using GitHub. The reason why I like this approach, this eliminates me having to manage everybody's passwords and instead utilize GitHub to make the authentication process go smoother, making the app much more manageable because you just have this one sign in button and much more secure. But taking a look here, first, I'm going to show you the setup from the Strapi endpoint side of things. All you have to do is go ahead, click on the GitHub provider and enable it. And I'm going to definitely remove this, but for now, I am definitely leaking my client secret, which is okay, because I'm going to change it after I make this video. But all you would need to do is to add your client ID, your client secret. And if you're wondering, where do I get the client ID or the client secret? This is something you set up in GitHub. So taking a look at my GitHub account, you could go to settings and go into developer settings. And here you could, under OAuth, add different application. For this particular instance, I'm using coding 30 local. And if you take a look at this example, once you set this up, your client ID will be provided here. And this is what you would enter here in your Strapi application. Also, when generating this, this will automatically generate your client secret. And this is, again, something that you provide here in your Strapi application. And here, you just need to provide your home URL of your front-end application. And finally, we have our Strapi authorization callback. This is where we're going to make the request once we authenticate with GitHub. And finally, back in our Strapi provider setting, we want to make sure that we add a redirect link. And this is going to be our Next.js route handler that's going to be responsible for the rest of the logic, which is also going to call our Strapi callback function. So once we have this in place, let's take a look at the workflow with the diagram. So our journey is going to start on our Next.js front end with our sign-in button. Once we click our sign-in button, it's going to go ahead and redirect us to a Strapi endpoint responsible for the connection with GitHub, which is going to redirect us to GitHub sign-in. So clicking the button, notice that we are redirected to our GitHub instance. So let's go ahead and sign in. Once I enter my authentication code, we are going to be redirected to our connect GitHub redirect Next.js route handler with the access token that we'll be able to use to gain access to the GitHub user ID to be able to create the user account. Once we have the GitHub access token in the route, we're going to call our Strapi backend once more by calling the connect GitHub callback. This is going to use the access token from GitHub create the Strapi user, and in return is going to return back our user data, including the JWT token that we could set as a HTTP only cookie. So once I entered my two-factor authentication, notice it shows my username, Paul Broslavsky, which is data that was received from GitHub, and I am logged in. And that's exactly what happened when I signed in. 
added my two-factor authentication. We were redirected to our Next.js route handler, of which we're gonna take a look in just a moment. And we had access to the access token that we needed from GitHub. Here in the connect GitHub redirect route handler, I have the logic that's responsible for handling the data. From the response from GitHub, within our params, we have access to our access token that I'm gonna to use to pass it back to our Strapi callback. Looking at the diagram, we have our access token and we're passing it back to our Strapi API Connect GitHub callback. That request is going to be responsible either creating a new user based on the GitHub user data, or if Strapi user already exists, it's gonna go ahead and log us in. In our data response, we're going to have access to the JWT token that we're going to set our JWT token. And once that's done, we redirect the user back to our homepage. And that's exactly what we saw here. And now if we take a look at our Strapi admin, and here we could see that we just created a new user based on our GitHub provider in Strapi, which is kind of cool. So finally, just the final recap to review the process once we click the sign in button. And again, you'll have the code available. I'll make sure to share it in the description to this video. We call our Strapi backend, which then calls our GitHub sign in. Once we get the access token from GitHub, we are able to pass it back via Next.js route handler, which is then in return gonna take that access token and make another call to Strapi backend, which is going to either create a new user or authenticate with the current user that we have, returning the JWT token. In code, I have that auth button that redirects to our API Connect GitHub Strapi backend. Once that makes a call to GitHub, we are redirected back to our route handler. You could find it inside app under connect, provider, redirect under route. And this is where we are getting our token that we are passing back to our Strapi backend. And our Strapi backend returns our authenticated user with the JWT token that we could set. And if you're wondering how am I getting the user information, if you take a look inside a Strapi project under libs services, you're going to see get user me loader function. And what it does, it is going to get the token from the JWT token cookie and is going to make a request to Strapi's API user me endpoint to validate if the token that I have stored as HTTP only token matches the token and the user that logged in in Strapi. And if so, it's going to go ahead and return my user data. If not, it's going to return user is false. And in my layout.tsx file, I'm getting the logged in user data if the user is logged in. And if I have the user, I go ahead and return it to the header, which either displays the user data, or if you're signed out, it displays the sign in button. And I'll make sure to link to this GitHub repo where you could have the access to the code examples that I used in this video. With that being said, if you wanna try Strapi, you could go ahead to the documentation and play around with it or try it with the apps that I create. But if you want to get a cooler example, you can try start your demo where you have access automatically spin up for you for free to our demo project called Launchpad, which has Next.js frontend. It has beautiful UI. You could play around and check it out. And you could have the product section really good example. And you also have access to your Strapi admin, which you will be provided the access to. And that way you can explore a more complex Strapi application using Strapi 5 and Next.js. And here you could see all the different collection types and pages and so on. So it's a more complex projects that you could take a look at and it's available to you for free. And if you just want to spin up the project locally, it's available to you to use and do whatever you like with it for free. You could check it out on its GitHub, at GitHub Strapi Launchpad. And if you have any questions, you could always reach out and let me know. And if you still have questions, you could search Strapi GitHub Provider, and you're going to see this article, Implementing GitHub Social Login in Next.js. And this article that I wrote for Strapi that covers all those steps, but I also wanted to share it in this video as well with this new code example. I am looking to rebuild my Coding After 30 website, which originally was built re Remix, rebuilt to use Next.js. And today we took a look how to handle sign-in 
with Next.js and Strapi GitHub provider. I'll make sure to link to this article below and of course to the repo to this code so you could check it out yourself. If you have any questions, definitely ask them in the comments or you could join us during our open office hours on Strapi's Discord. I'm usually there Monday through Friday, 12.30 p.m. CST time. But with that being said, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.